Hey, what's up everybody? Josh here, and this is the macro lens from Sandmark, built specifically for the iPhone. I've been wanting to test out some auxiliary lenses for a while now because, frankly, I didn't really see what all the fuss was about. Add-on lenses just seems like a gimmick. Anamorphic lenses, for instance, while they produce some really unique results, have pretty limited uses when it comes to capturing photos and videos on your phone. So when Sandmark reached out and suggested I try one of their macro lenses, I decided to give it a go, fully expecting to be annoyed and disappointed. Spoiler alert, I was wrong. And full disclosure, Sandmark supplied the macro lens kit for this review, but they did not sponsor this video in any other way, and they don't have a say in what goes into my reviews. That said, let's get into what's in the box. So first I have an iPhone SE 2020, so that's the edition I requested. Sandmark currently makes these kits for phones going back as far as the iPhone 7. So the first thing you'll pull out is your phone case, which is a very simple, fairly thin case with a metal threading for your lens. And even though it's thin, it still feels very sturdy, pretty rigid, and has kind of a velvety texture. Next, you have a cloth bag containing your lens, a lens hood, and a clip if you want to skip putting the custom case on, but more on that in a minute. So on the lens, you have a cover on the front and back. The back one has a tab that you pull off, but the front one pretty much covers the whole lens, so you'll want to mount it first before trying to pull it off. So first, let's pop the phone into the case, which goes in very easily, so that's nice. Threading on the lens, for the most part, feels good. I have encountered a little sticking where it feels like it wants to cross-thread. Regardless, it always goes on fine. Like I said, the threads are metal, which is a great feature. So now let's get the cap off, and let me just say right off the bat, this lens looks and feels professional. As weird as that may be to say for a phone lens, the body is just machined really well, and it's all metal and has some nice heft to it. Now, for the most part, you're going to want to use the lens hood with this thing, which just slips onto the front of the lens. Reason being is that you have to have the lens extremely close to your subject for it to be in focus, and the edge of the lens hood marks roughly where your focus point is. And because the lens hood is literally sitting on your subject, it's made of clear plastic to let light through. The only issue being you may cast a noticeable shadow on whatever you're shooting, especially in bright sunlight, so in some cases, you may just have to take the lens hood off anyway. For extreme close-ups, and you'll want to look away if you're creeped out by eye photos, I had to take the lens hood off to get close enough to focus on my iris. The focus is still a little soft, but close enough for the lens to touch my eyelashes, which was <laughs> enough for me. So I will say, I was initially disappointed by the focus distance on this. It creates some limitations because of how close you have to get to your subject, but I think the quality of the photos more than offset this. It is slightly inconvenient when shooting insects though, take pictures of bees at your own risk. It's also important to note that your phone isn't going to be able to autofocus much with this lens. All that said, this thing takes crazy sharp photos. Image quality is superb. Small subjects, plants, textures, and insects look fantastic. You can also take videos with this thing, but it's pretty hard to keep focus. If you're filming something like watch gears, which I didn't happen to have a mechanical watch at the time. So here's a shot of a digital watch. You can see the pixels moving around in there. But in any case, it should be something that is on the same plane. It's not moving around a lot. Otherwise, it is just going to move in and out of focus too much. But let's back up just a little bit and talk about the other accessory that came with the lens, and that's the clip. So the clip is there if you just want to quickly pop the lens on without having to use the Sandmark case. The clip works great if your phone isn't in a case. It lines up perfectly, but frankly, I don't know that many people that don't use a case. Trying the clip with my case on, it worked fine, but I did have to move the lens around a little bit to make sure it covered the camera completely. Otherwise, you'll have some funky black edges or vignetting around your image. So using the clip with your case shouldn't be a problem, but it will take a little finagling. Your experience may vary depending on what type of case you have. Regardless, 
If you're into macro photography and you want to be able to capture some sweet images with your phone, I would highly recommend this lens. It's sturdy, looks and feels professional, and creates some amazing photos. Not only that, but these lenses are very reasonably priced. The macro edition is currently priced at $89.99. And if you're looking for more than just a macro lens, Sandmark sells an entire line of lenses and filters for the iPhone, which I'll link to in the description if you want to check them out. And don't forget, anytime you use one of my links to make a purchase, you help support the channel. And by the way, if you like this sweet vintage Into the AM shirt, I'll link to that in the description as well. You can use code McDaris10 to get 10% off your order. They got tons of psychedelic designs to choose from, so definitely check them out. And hey, if you found this video useful in any way, shape, or form, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can find me elsewhere on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.